Okay. Are we live again? Are we fine? Everything good? Oh, no one was moving. N none of you guys were moving for a second, so I thought, like, Discord was frozen. It kind of freaked me out. In time. And, and then, all of a sudden, Pancake moved, like, crazy fast all of a sudden. That's fine. Oh, okay. Well, that was uh, a wild ride. Anyways, hello, everyone. Basically, you're welcome to some quarantine. We're going to be playing some today. Um, we're missing uh, Sulphur and Nat. Unfortunately, uh, Nat has a headache and Sulphur has prior arrangements and haven't heard from Corin. So um, hopefully they are doing OK. What? Where did OBS go? Stop closing for shame. All right. Where did we leave off? We left off on. Um, oh, you guys were talking to Eldred, And. Uh, a disturbance was detected. In. Uh, a town far away called Honeywell. And you guys were going to be heading out in that said direction, uh, but it was getting late, so you were going to resupply, and Eldred and his uh, mage apprentices, apprentices um, were going to gather the materials they needed to actually open the portal to get you uh, to a tower that is reasonably close to the town, since it's really far away. Uh, we're going to go with... Uh, Corrin is still off... Actually, Corn and, uh, I shouldn't say Nat. Um, oh my god, what, I'm spacing their name. Vasha. Um, they are off still doing their tasks that they had last time we played. Um, Sulphur is essentially, um, gonna stay behind a little bit longer in town to help more with repairs since he, it kind of is up his alley. Um, okay. This is so a goody goody two shoe. Uh, sulfur? I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll have to... Think, well, he likes making things and fixing things. He is a forge cleric, after all, so... He's gonna... Well, there is a keyword cleric right there. Mm-hmm. Mm. So he's gonna be doing that. Um, Echo was in somewhat of a comatose state last time uh, we played. Um... And so I guess we'll do a little bit of stuff for you right now, Echo. Um, after um, everyone went to the fire swamp and all that good stuff, and you guys came back and rested, uh, Pancog and Lushu uh, woke up to help the town, and you did not wake up. Um, as far as uh, you know, you got pulled into the depths of your subconscious in your mind, and the Oracle started talking to you. Um... Your oracle was uh, explaining to you that uh, they were they're displeased with uh, your lack of prioritizing the task that they want you to do. Um, and so that's why they are uh, they've chosen to uh, bind your your mind from control of your your body uh, for the time being, uh, mostly as a threat to threaten you as in saying, hey, you may, we're still here, and uh, we, we can literally stop you uh, uh, if we so choose. So you need to start prioritizing us. Um, okay. We're going to say uh, the rest of the team, uh, you're coming. It's, you know, it's late at night. After talking to Eldred, you're going to go pass out. Uh, and you guys are walking back into the inn uh, for your, uh, I don't know, your rest. Um Jordan is still uh, attending to Echo. Um, and this is we'll we'll start off here. Uh, how are you guys going to proceed for your night? What time did you say it was now? It's getting late. It's like 9 p.m. Okay. You had a hard day's we, work. We, we ate and stuff. Me and... Um... Pancog, we ate before we left into town, right? Uh, you guys have yeah. stayed in town. I believe you all ate dinner and stuff after uh, helping the town rebuild and stuff. So we haven't actually I... eaten today <clears throat> after waking up because um, Echo didn't wake up. Echo hasn't eaten yet because she hasn't woken up. Okay then, so it's, so we need to eat now then, really. I'd say have... I'd say I'd, I'd probably ask for some food. Lucia will go up to the bar. Um... 
and try and get himself some some hearty food so he can get a nice like no lion sleep like full belly sleep a full yeah, belly sleep you know those sleeps everyone knows those sleeps those are the good sleeps um, those are the christmas best dinner sleeps, sleeps. oh christmas dinner <laughs> sleeps dude hell yeah those are the ones that you need to get. So, lucia's gonna go for that christmas dinner the christmas uh, you know, dinner type sleep eats, type eats yeah he's gonna, he's gonna he's gonna ask for that much food it's just overwhelming um and yeah i'm gonna go and take a seat wait for it and as soon as it arrives just munch and i was gonna say they didn't have that much food they had rations because of how badly the town is yeah, remember, well, uh, well, remember i'm i'm a rogue like i'm all meant to be skinny stealthy you know that sort of stuff anyway so i don't need a lot for it to really be considered a hearty meal so, also, uh, that's the only way that they're able to pay you guys is lodging and food anyway, so, you know, they're, they're gonna well, feed they you the best they can. Yeah, yeah, dude. So even if I've got to give them a bit of extra, you know, silver, gold, whatever for it, I'm down. I need that good rest, good sleep. Okay. So you're gonna go get you some dinners. Cool. Um, go ahead. I also accompany Lushu and request uh, some raw meat for Carrion as well to Munjon so that he is fit for travel tomorrow. Okay. Rest, are you gonna join in, get some foods as well? Uh, they, they just kind of load you up with some, you know, simple food. Corn on the cob, mashed potatoes. A little bit of meat they can give you. Um, like, like Thanksgiving kind of food? No, just something to tide you over kind of thing. It's uh, it's food to fill your belly. No, nothing extravagant. Boxing day food. <laughs> meat and potatoes. There you go. That's what we need. America. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Um, okay, so you guys are there. Uh, it's getting late, so uh, Jardon, he he starts coming down the stairs uh, in the inn. And uh, you can you can see that he just kind of wipes some sweat from his brow, uh, walks through, and he says, I see you guys sitting there, and he's like, Oh, hello, friends. I, I wish I had better news. Uh, I thought uh, friend Echo might have uh, been coming to there for a moment, but... Uh, it seems that she's just having some uh, fever uh, fits and night sweats. Uh, unsure what's going on. She she's she's calling out sometimes. Um, I don't know. M maybe one of you guys might want to go. Uh, I don't know. Maybe just your presence will kind of help put her her soul at ease for a bit. <clears throat> I look at Lucy when I say, uh, "Well, you know her best." Uh, why, why not give it a shot? Okay, so Lucia's gonna walk over to where Echo's laying down, um, and just rest his hand, like, you know, upon her shoulder, but from behind, so it's more like, you know, rough top, and, um, just kind of closes his eyes and tries to use, like, cause we're both elves, right, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Echo is an elf, yeah. Um, and yeah. wait, we have, what is it? Um, it's not the first, uh, there's nothing that actually allows us to like, connect by our ancestors. No, yeah, you're not Vulcan. No, okay, that was the one, yeah. Um, <laughs> I've played, played a lot of different D&D &D recently. Hey, you, confused. Um, you both have pointy ears, but that's about the extent of the similarity. That's what I mean. <laughs> the pointy uh, ears yeah, give yeah, better yeah, reception. Rest, rest my hand on Echo's shoulder and see if, see if she wakes up. Let's see what happens, see how she reacts. Uh, she, she still, uh, she doesn't seem to move. Uh, her body is very hot. Uh, she seems to be, uh, very feverish. Uh, she's sweating a lot. Uh, there is a, there's a, you know, a, a water basin there with, uh, rags and stuff. Jordan's been using them to try to keep her cooled down a little bit. But, uh, uh there's no response, uh, from you touching her. Hmm. Hmm. 
Jordan uh, comes back into the room. Uh, he's like, oh, pardon me. Sorry, I I found additional supplies. I was going to leave at the side of the bed here uh, so uh, the night shift can have an easier time taking care of her. Uh, any any luck there? Uh, this is going to look over Jordan and just say, uh, not really. There's been no no response at all. She she's hot to the touch and sweat uh, sweating and she doesn't seem in the right way. Is there anything else you can tell us? He kind of shrugs himself. He's like, I I really wish I knew. Um, by all accounts, she's healthy. Uh, she has no. It doesn't seem that she has a sickness. She doesn't seem to be contagious. Just she she's unconscious. Uh, she's not responsive, um, but rest assured, we're trying our best uh, to bring all our minds here to try to find out what's going on here. And then he he kind of comes over and he starts, you know, rubbing up some some herbs and stuff, trying to make a paste. Uh, he said uh, he kind of says to you, he's like, "So I heard uh, you're gonna be making a trip to Honeywell soon." I can't remember why we're going to Honeywell. Uh, oh yeah, we, we should probably do a refresher. Um, there's a there, there was a disturbance um, that was detected. Remember that the little glowy orb thing that looks like water, um, and it was pinging, yes. saying something's going on. Um, yes. And you guys were gonna go investigate it because it seems to it might have a, a reference or not reference. It might be similar to the anomalies you guys have encountered so far. Um, mm. And uh, you guys were gonna go investigate uh, some some something with the the world stones as well. Okay. Well, I was just trying to like you know kind of convey that general information, explain you know we've we've come across some strange things upon our travels, and we we have a a, a very strong feeling that what's happening in Honeywood, am I right? Honeywell. Honeywell, Honeywell, that's the one. Um, in Honeywell has very similar. Uh, factors as what we've already encountered, and we just need to find out what's going on. Uh, he says, uh, "What do you mean? Like, uh, what do you what do you expect to find in Honeywell?" He doesn't know anything, obviously, because he's been here helping Echo, so he doesn't know anything that happened with Eldred. Okay. Um. Well, it's. It's a very, very long story, but the the gist of it is there's um it was the world stones you said. Mm -hmm. World stones. There are these things known as world stones and we've we've been told they could be useful in many ways. So we need to go and discover what those are all about. Uh echo twitches. Oh, Quick, everyone start chanting Worldstones. Let's go. <laughs> 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 you can't sound like Infinity Stones. Um, Is anyone else in the room right now besides Serial? Or, sorry, uh, Lushu? No? Uh, you? Other than Jordan, no. Okay. Uh, you guys just, just munching. Okay, so, um... Echo kind of twitches, uh, kind of at, at, at the mention of the world tones, um, as well as, you know, investigating kind of a uh, Honeywell. Uh, but so far, that seems to be the, the only response you're getting. Uh, Jordan does take notice of it, though. He's like, did she just move? And I'm guess at the point where she does jolt a little bit, my hand was still on her shoulder, so I kind of felt it. Lucy like removes his hand and said, "Yeah, um, he, maybe maybe what we need is is there. This has to, this has to mean something, Jordan. Do, do you think?" He kind of furrows his brow and he's like, "Curious. Tell me more." This world stone and these anomalies. Uh, I like these sounds, by the way. Um, <laughs> it's ruddy mysterious. 
Um, <laughs> oh, dude, I can't remember all of that. That's honestly. fine. Uh, <laughs> we, we, there was so could, much that happened over that time, and it's been a while since it could be just uh, cool. you know, you've been seeing like while well, they uh, they experienced that hole in the ground, um, your city disappeared. Remember when there was that tower, and we had to get from the top of the tower to the bottom before the, the hole in the ground. Mm -hmm. It's all in your notes. Um, also, there's a. Uh, um, actually, uh, Zozo and Eva uh, had the strangeness with. Well, they they had the the knowledge of the world stone, uh, because of the veil stone that they saw. So. Um, We'll just say you convey to uh, Jordan that you believe they may con be connected. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll say that you just kind of explain this to him over the course of 20 minutes. And uh, Echo's body seems to have uh, cooled down a bit. Uh, her sweating has seemed to have stopped. And uh, you kind of didn't really notice this change over the 20 minutes. Um, but okay. uh, suddenly... Echo's eyes kind of open. Um, I don't know whether or not you notice because you're talking to Jordan. But Echo, you you open your I'm eyes. He doesn't. I'm guessing he wouldn't because he's so very interested in mm -hmm. telling this story. I think he's too deep into it. And obviously, he's not touching Echo anymore because of the twitching. It took his hand off. So yeah, I don't think he'd. Uh, I don't think Lucy would know that okay. his, uh, her eyes have opened. Uh, Echo, you wake up because the Oracle was overhearing this conversation and uh, they mentioned to you that uh, this seems to be on the path that uh, they want you to be. So they're letting you regain control of, you know, your your body for the time being. But again, they, they just kind of threaten that it's like, don't don't dilly dally. You know, it's like you're there. You're essentially a prisoner in this vessel right now and they can stop it at any moment so i'm going to wake up with a gasp and uh and hopefully that will rouse looks looks his um attention and then um i'm going to say we really really need to go to honeywell right now let's go let's go right now urgency and that's going to be isn't it still late yeah, I don't care what time it is. it's it's like 10 p.m. But she mentions Honeywell to you. She has no idea, or she was never in any of the discussions of Honeywell. She's been in a coma this whole time, but somehow she knew about this town named Honeywell. Okay. That's I'm gonna. <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at. Jordan, I'm um, a bit confused. Lucy's gonna, um, kind of, how, how far away is everyone else right now? Like, if I was to go They're to downstairs. the, the door, like the door frame area, and just shout, like, does anyone know about, or does anyone else know about Honeywell? Oh, yeah, they, they would hear you. They would hear it, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, Lucy's gonna shout that, he's gonna run, look, Jordan, a bit, sort of, confused by it. And um, thinking about the, the new adventurers who have joined our, our party, um, I'm going to run to the top of the stairs uh, as quick as possible and going to shout down um, just that. Does anyone know of a town called Honeywell? I mean, the rest of the party, they know as much as you that that's where you're planning on going. What I was saying Echo knows is that she, the Oracle overheard it and told her about it. She shouldn't have known, had any recollection about your next adventure oh, at all, okay. right? Okay. Because okay. she's been in a coma, but she is essentially up to speed what's going on because the Oracle was conveying this information to her and said, "Cool, okay. you can wake up now." All right. Okay. Well, I'm gonna actually. Lush, what Lush is gonna do is we'll do a retcon. He's gonna um take um echo uh, by the arm because you know she hasn't eaten mm -hmm. in a while she, she seems a bit panicked um like you know looking a little bit worse for wear a bit weak i'm so halfway I'm ready gonna... to get <laughs> to <laughs> gonna take her um by the arm and try to um lead her downstairs to at least get something to eat and drink 
um, so we can all sit down and kind of discuss what happens before we decide to retire for the evening. Okay. Um, you make your way downstairs, you know, just she hasn't eaten in over 24 hours, so she's a little bit weak and uh, been sweating out, so her body's a little fatigued here, but uh, make your way downstairs and the rest of the party notices that she's awake and uh, she's coming downstairs. I'm gonna call out. <laughs> Mighty chipper for someone who napped that long. <laughs> I'm gonna call out to the uh, the bartender oh, for a plate of food as soon as possible and um, the largest ale that they have. Why are you ordering me ale? It's the morning. No, it's an, it's like 10 p.m. Yeah, you just wake up in the evening. Yeah. yeah. How long will I be asleep for? Uh, over 24 hours. Dear God. Yeah. Okay. You've been out. You've been out for, for a, minute. a while. I'm pretty sure. No, I'm pretty sure she. I think she was asleep for what two days. Yeah, it's Technically, probably closer to two. Because you guys got back from the fire swamp. You went to bed that day. Mm -hmm. She didn't wake up that morning. And then got up and went. And then everyone else helped around the town for a full day. So, it's been at least a day. Okay, I need to sit down. I need to think about just everything that's happening. I'll be over there. I'll go find a chair in the corner. <laughs> okay, they bring uh, you some you some food. Um, and uh, you're, you, you're very much, uh, you know, kind of... Somewhat in a panic, uh, you you don't want to uh, you know go unconscious again. Um, you want to pursue pursue Honeywell um, at earliest convenience. Um, you don't know that the Mage Tower is you know gathering requirements to get you a, a teleport uh, of sorts there. Uh, but the rest of the party, you know, informs you of what has happened. Um, Actually, Echo has never met the new party members yet, right? Nope. No. Okay, so you have uh, <laughs> Sulfur. <laughs> I don't know what Sulfur's doing right at the moment. Uh, you know, we he could probably be there too, but I don't know. He, I'm not gonna RP him for him, but uh, Zozo and Eva are there. It's nice to meet you. I I, I I believe we haven't met. Luxu? Ask him. Introduction. Well, I'm, 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 okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm coming back from the um, the bar at this point, obviously, you know, after, you know, ordering some more drinks. Um, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to um, point towards um, Eva and say this. Eva, and this uh, is Zozo. She doesn't speak much. Nice to meet you both. <laughs> You're gonna have to bear with me. I have no idea what time, day, or whatever. <laughs> I I don't know. Just I need a moment. Uh, That's fair. At least you're feeling better. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you do you do uh, notice Corin is gone too. I look over to. Uh, you, uh, you're, you're breaking up pancake. There you go. I... Is that better? There you go. Okay. Um, I look over to Echo, and I tell her about uh, what we went through in the fire swamp, why Corin's not in the party, and just try to catch her up to speed. Cool. All while Kyrian is trying to get her attention to pet him. Okay. Um, after you get, you kind of, you all get to know each other a little bit more and explain what was going on to bring Echo a little bit up to speed. Uh, Mayor McGribblegums, I, I always forget his name. I keep changing it. Uh, he kind of comes in. Um, Gribbleby something. I don't know. Um, he comes in and says, I've been sent to inform you. That your travel accordance have been made in order. 
They wait you at the mage tower. At your earliest convenience. You may wish to stay and rest up for the night, or you can go on, get on your way. Your choice. And then he kind of turns around and grumbles out. He, he's, he feels this is beneath his st uh, station, you know, being the mayor and all, running errands. Like, I'm the mayor of this town. I'm going to send me to go run these stupid errands. And get an errand boy, and he'll just treat me like an errand boy. And he just kind of <laughs> walks out. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, how how long is the journey to Honeywell from where we are by that um the travel? teleport? Yeah, it's what, just well, instantaneous. Well, the teleport will get you to a tower, like it's another mage tower, uh, within the vicinity. But then it's like you know half day's walk away. Um, well, I don't know if they told you that or not. I, I'll I'll say that. Eldred did. He said they'll get you as close as they can. So otherwise, it's like a three-week walk. Yeah, it's it's okay. far away. Um, well, considering <laughs> considering that it's what by by this point, I'm guessing it's around half past ten. Yeah, it, it's um, getting late. Around ten. Yeah, Necro came downstairs around half ten now. Um, so if it's gonna be like you know, let's say twenty minutes to get to the mage tower, and then getting over there it's going to be dangerous to go at night um smart thinking so yeah, i reckon i reckon going to to rest right now would be the best option we can refresh our abilities our hp etc etc and then make moves um as early as we can in the morning um just so you know we get to where we need to be around midday to have as much time in the light as possible Yeah, you get you agree. This is all you guys. Uh, yeah, I believe most of us have at least some version of dark vision, so shouldn't be that bad. Actually, do you all have to? Oh, do you, do halflings have dark vision? I don't remember. I feel like no. I don't think they do either, but no. But we can always try a stream doer. <laughs> Do not keep the halfling on a leash. That's rude. Really cool. She'd be okay with it, to be honest. One of those little like kid backpacks that are like yes, really right? <laughs> hey, kid I mean, backpacks. Just for wandering and getting eaten by wolves. Oh, uh, I just um, uh, yeah. For, for five e, the only races that don't have dark vision are humans, halflings, and dragonborn. That's yep. it. Okay. Every other one does. So everyone else can see if it, if it happens to be night, you know. Zozo just might have to rely on one of you guys to show around. Um, okay, so you guys are gonna rest up. Yeah, that's why I said the child backpack. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so I guess uh, you guys will rest up for the night and uh, make your way to the mage tower at first dawn. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we're just gonna fast forward time a little bit. Morning. Uh, you guys can, you know, fast through some quick breakfasts and stuff. Uh, you make your way to the, the mage tower. Um, Eladrid looks a little bit worse for wear. Uh, it looks like he's been uh, hasn't slept. Um, trying to, you know, get you uh, what you need to get to the tower uh, as quick as possible. Um, he doesn't even notice that you guys walk up. Uh, he he's just so like focused and he he's running out of he's, he's running on so low energy that he it's taking all his energy just to focus at this moment um so he's you know um uh, writing down some scrolls and getting stuff down ready for the teleport here uh looks like uh, an area has been cleared out uh an area has been cleared out for the the summoning of the teleporter um it looks like there's some uh, burns on the floor that are fairly new, um, like scorch marks. Um, and uh, he, he's, he's like rubbing his temples and he's writing some more scrolls. Um, you, you hear pfft, 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 like random sounds of sparks and stuff in the distance from other uh, magi trying to do stuff. And he's like, no, again, 
why and then he's like we must get this right and then he's kind of like what is what is the deal he starts flipping through some uh some books he's like we gotta get this he doesn't notice you guys walk in I, I turn to Echo and Lushu as I state, would it be a terrible thing if we sneak up on him and potentially scare him? Lushu, <laughs> got an idea. Let's have some fun. Lushu looks at Pancock and says, hold up, I've got a better idea. And Lushu's gonna sneak up behind and um, try to pick his pocket, see if there's anything inside. Uh, You're gonna try that? No. Mm-hmm. I got a plus seven to sleight of hand now, so I All wanna right. use it, you know? Well, That's first you have to roll stealth, because there's people so everywhere. With the divan, I, oh, there's people, oh, I thought it was just him in No, there. there's a bunch of magi in there, oh, they're trying to open oh, a portal. Oh, shit! <laughs> okay, yeah, fuck it, yeah. I got, I got a plus seven to stealth as well, so... You can, okay. Right. Go for it. I'll give it, I'll give it a go, I'll give it a go, why not? For the banter, for the memes. That's got a, come on, 22, that's pretty good. Okay, um... You managed to sneak through. Um, you, you managed to walk up to El Eldred, uh, Pancog. You might want to roll stealth as well. If uh, you're in on this. <laughs> We're going to say everyone else is slightly oh, behind you on the stairs. <laughs> okay, let me, let me get to it. Internet is still funky because of all those stupid hurricanes. Ooh. Come on. Fantasy grounds. I can do it for you if you need to. Yes, please. Okay. It, it's kind of... Stealth. Ooh, that was almost a one. Ooh. Twelve! Um... <laughs> okay. Uh, Lushu successfully stealths up to Eladred. Uh, some of the Magi have taken notice of Pancog, but they don't really seem to... Pick, or like make a big deal of it there's like okay well they're here these are the people that we're trying to do the the summoning or the teleport for they don't notice Lushu Lushu you walk up to Eladrid are you uh actually gonna try to pick his pocket see when you say it like that <laughs> no this is me as a DM asking is that what you're gonna do or not uh yeah if on. you are go for it for the banner, for the banner. To be fair, the main reason why I want to do it is because I haven't really done much of it yet. And in my notes, I was checking them earlier on. It says like the bonds is I'll become the greatest thief that ever lived. So <laughs> I, need, I need to. Yeah, and so far every head. time you've tried to every pick time, up, it's gone wrong. Just been accused yeah. of being a pervert. I really yeah. wish that my yeah. colors weren't white on white. That's stupid. All right, sleight of hand, please. Uh. Ooh. Well, I mean, it could a roll be of ten. The, the plus, the plus seven is still. A roll of ten. Yeah, that's fine. Well, he, he's, you know, he's a I wizard. Mean, I, I can play this off. I can play this he's, off. He's, he's a mage. He has a bunch of cloth. You're, you're, you happen to find your way through folds of cloth, trying to pickpocket this guy. Um, you startle him because he didn't know you were there, and uh, all of a sudden, a big mist of pink, like explosive or like an explosion of pink mist uh envelops him and you and uh you know he's been hunched over focused on this stuff and he slowly stands up and turns around and his face is just <laughs> covered in this just pink powder and uh he is not happy and Love he's it. and he says <laughs> Can I help you? <laughs> so, um, I, I, I was trying to. I can hear Thor purring through the mic, and it's really cute. Um, my apologies. Uh, I, I was trying to, uh, to, to to scare you a little bit. To, he's laughing as well, trying to play it off as if he was trying to. Uh, do I have to roll? He throws up his hand. He's like, "It's best you don't speak before I turn you into a toad." <laughs> and he pushes his way past you. And just like shoulders into you and walks over to this other magi and s slams a book down 
And uh, he's, he yells at the other Magi, and he's like, Again! Uh, he's, now, he was frustrated before, but now he's angry. So, good job. Um, he he kind of glares at you. Um, it's his call for failing. You see, uh, they're, they're like in a... Beef my butt. There's a bunch of Magi, they're like in kind of like a star pattern, and uh, th they kind of like raise their hands up. And uh, one of them starts like tracing glyphs in the air and they begin chanting um, and you see kind of like a swirling mist begin to happen in the center of uh, the area again and a, a portal begins to stretch open and shrink and grow and smoke's going around it um, there's arcs of lightning happening and it begins to peer open and then and then collapses in on itself and uh, explodes and that's where the scarch marks are coming. And uh, Eldred says, "Damn it!" And he, he's like, "Who's done doing the enchantment correctly?" And he he starts starts screaming. The the mages start blaming each other about various things that could be happening. <clears throat> Eldred holds out his hand, and a, a book kind of flows over to him, and he starts flipping through the books. He's like, "There's something disturbing the portal." We're having a hard time opening it. Now I leave this up to you. We can try this idea. It's risky. And the portal is will be unstable, but it can get you there. Otherwise, we're gonna have to rewrite how uh this portal's work is it is it's refusing to open. Something is not working on the receiving end. <clears throat> I look to my more magic inclined uh, party members and I ask them, well, as you are more uh, knowledgeable in magics, what, what do you suggest? Well, this is the first time um, Echo has actually lifted her head up from the diary she's been writing in because all the way she's been trailing you and tripping up whilst writing um, in a hurry to get this to Honeywell, uh, writing down everything that was said to her in her dreams the other night. She looks up and then she went, well, why are we waiting? Let, let's go. And then just sees pink everywhere and confused. Why are we waiting? Let's go. <laughs> Is Eldred still got all the pink stuff over his face? Or else he's getting all mad. No, he's, you know, he took his... Ro oh, he's got one of those robes with, like, the big-ass sleeves, and he just kind of... Oh, he Mulan's it, where he just takes off, just, like, one swoop, just takes off all the makeup. You guys know what I'm talking about? Am I alone here? Yeah, so he takes it off. I, I look over to Echo and, and say that well, the holdup is, it appears that uh, there is something disturbing the portal, uh, as said by the mages. So, that's why I was asking your opinion, since, again, you have the most... Rather, um, I, we don't have time to wait for them to rewrite the whole of everything we know to get us transported there. I say we take their original offer of trying to get us there in the only way they know how. It may be more dangerous, but we can do it. Lushu... Uh. Oh, yeah, Lushu's gonna <laughs> agree as well. Yeah, yeah. Three, 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 three weeks. Let's risk it for the biscuit, my dude. Let's go. Yeah. Zozo, I saw your head nod. Are, are you a, are you in agreement? And Zozo, uh, yeah, she just takes along. I okay. don't think she understands what's happening. She's just like, uh, okay. Uh, Eva, um, you're good. Oh wait, yeah. I speak halfling. I can explain what's going on to Zozo and halfling. Sure, if you want. I don't. I don't know if she'll grasp it. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's just like, uh, I'll, I'll just this portal thing, man, I don't get it. May, I'll just simplify it. And magic <laughs> is funky, not worky right. Uh, so we have to think of uh, the other way to do this. 
Is that okay with you? <laughs> okay. Um, does, how does Zozo respond to that? I guess she just kind of nod. She, she's a... just like, yes, I totally understand what you just said. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so Eladred uh, hears you say that uh, you're gonna risk it. Um, he says, uh, he turns to his mages and says, very well, put everything you can into it. And all of a sudden, uh, they start, you know, raising their hands again, start tracing out these glyphs or whatever. And, uh, it feels like the, the room becomes to like close in on you. It feels very oppressive. The, the air starts to get heavy. Um, again, the, the portal starts to swirl open again. And this time, uh, more arcs of like, and, and. They, they were swirling around the ball, but they're like arcing now to do the different instruments and stuff in the room. Uh, sometimes they'll spark off your armor, but it, cause, it doesn't hurt. Um, more smoke swirls around. Um, the, the lights in the room begin to uh, darken. Uh, the portal begins to actually open. And normally uh, a portal, you would actually see the, the destination through it. Uh, but all you see is darkness and smoke just billowing through it. But it it begins to open uh the there's a whoosh of wind that doesn't there's no wind in here the, you're inside a building but it's swirling around you um it's very chaotic it's very loud um eldred has to yell uh so you guys can uh hear him i'm not gonna yell that loud because i don't want to blow out your ears but he's like the portal is open it seems to be unstable but you can get through it Honeywell, it will be to the northeast of your location. It'll be about a half day's walk. Be careful going through the forest. The map is... The, the town is small enough. It's not on any map. Just be sure to head due northeast. You'll find it in about a half day's time. Good luck, my friends. And hurry. The portal's going to collapse. Uh... I, I grab Lushu and I push him before I I jump in. <laughs> I'm in. I straight in. <laughs> I need to go. This, these are sounds that you're hearing from the portal. So, uh, who's all through going through it? Uh, I guess. I guess. I think. Okay. You're all through I, now. I, I, Okay. Okay. Um, what about Zozo and Ava? Did they go through the portal? I mean, it doesn't seem like anyone's getting ripped apart or anything by going through. So yeah, <laughs> Ava will go through. <laughs> Zozo runs in. She's not afraid. Okay. So this is a, this is why I push a badass. First. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you're all through it. Have you gone through Echo, right? Okay, uh, you guys managed to, you know, pop out through the other side of the portal. It's obviously open in an area that it's not generally supposed to open. Um, you're a little bit higher off the ground. Uh, everyone roll a, a dex check. Oh, Lord. Uh, Vasive, you're going to have to do it for me because my fantasy ground crashed. Okay. Oh, yeah, totally did. You're not even in the, the thing anymore. Dicks. Good trip. Never mind. Sorry, I missed up my uh, mic. Oh, the unnatural twenty, huge. Did you? Jeez. No, not me, Ava. Oh, nice. <clears throat> Wait, a dex save or a dex check? Check. Oops, I did the wrong one. That yeah, was my. Did, yeah. <laughs> that was my bad. Another twenty, my dudes. Look at you guys go. Yeah. Why can't I do a Oops. dex check? Oops. Uh, hey. Sixteen is good. Where's the dex check? Why can't yeah. I do it? Oh, there it goes. Oof. Okay. Well, Pancog got a five. Sorry, Pancog. Um, you, I feel like 
keep trying to kill me. Dude, it's <laughs> it I have notorious bad rules. I don't know. Um Here you go. Okay. Got to place some Okay, so uh you teleport you're into the the forest, uh middle of a forest. Let's see you guys just checks. Uh Lushu 18, Eva 20, Pancog 5. Zozo 20. Okay. Everyone, uh, you're, you're about 20 feet in the air, uh, from the portal. Uh, everyone seems to, you know, you step through and, uh, and just, you know, when you like try to walk down stairs and you think there's another, or there, there's not another step and you, uh, you catch yourself, you do that, but you're 20 feet in the air, but you all manage to catch yourselves, uh, except for Pancog. You kind of just, you, you see Kyrian and you worry, you're like, ah, Kyrian, but then, like, halfway through it, you're like, he's a cat. He's gonna land on his feet, but you face plant, and just, poof. Uh, everyone else is kind of, poof. And, uh, you are now in the forest. There is a, a derelict tower near you. Um, it looks like someone maybe visits it, like, once every few months. Um, it is not well up, uh, kept up, but... You have found your direction, or you have found the tower, and uh, the forest around you is very dense. Um, lots of really old trees, many vines. Uh, getting your way through uh, the forest is uh, going to be difficult, but uh, you are there. Yeah, you all made it in one piece. Okay, we have to go northeast, right? Mm hmm. Due northeast. Mm hmm. Okay, then. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna. Uh, Luffy's gonna yell over at um, Pancog and tell her to pick herself up. We need to start moving right now. Um, <coughs> and start making his way towards northeast. Okay. okay. I am the same, just head straight to northeast. Oh, um, go ahead. Ah, thanks, bag. There we go. <laughs> um, Pancog, you are, uh, your specialty is in forests, right? Yes. Bonus for you guys. Um, so you guys can move at normal speed going through the forest now. Um, so I'm assuming Pancog, you might want to be in on point. So you can actually lead the party through the I'm forest here. Right now. Yeah. I will as soon as I get uh aha. one of the D twenties. Okay, what do I need to roll? You don't need to roll anything, I was just saying um I'm assuming you just wanted to be in front to lead the rest of the party. Uh yes. Since you know so, your way through forest. Do you, I can I do a perception check to see if any of my favorable enemies are nearby? Sure. Uh, what's my modifier? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's a plus 12. I don't know. That's your passive. Perception, uh, plus two. Uh, plus two, so I got a 19. Uh, from what you can tell, there's, uh, no one of interest, uh, that is around. It is a very overgrown forest. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so I point, uh, everyone towards the northwest and state. Well, northwest is that way, so let us... Head on. You might want to go northeast. Northeast? Yeah. I thought you said northwest. Nope. <laughs> okay. Uh, <let> me... <laughs> it's like yeah, northeast. <laughs> but, and then and now I'll be like, wait, you guys said northeast. I'm sorry. Northeast <laughs> is that way. Okay. Let's go. So uh. Yeah, that gives lots of confidence. With the uh, Pancog's guidance, you guys are able to uh traverse this very dense uh forest with relative ease you know there, there's some difficulty um 
because of how overgrown it is. Uh, but it would have been far worse uh, if you didn't have a, a ranger at your side. Um, but you travel for a good part of the day. Um, and uh, you kind of you reach a clearing. And it uh, looks like there's uh, there's smoke in the distance. Uh, looks like it's probably coming from like chimneys. So you, you could probably assume that you're near uh, Honey Honeywell. I turn to the rest of my party members. How are we wanting to go about entering the town? Are we going in stealthily to survey the area, or... Uh, Any solutions? Lu Lu gonna um, look up and notice <clears throat> that the smoke coming, so he's gonna say, well, uh, clearly there's, there's people there. Um, maybe it's best we make ourselves known. I mean, they're not used to many people coming through here. If we try going in like that and we're caught, then that could look bad on us. Perhaps it's best We could explain uh, that we were sent here. And... Uh, Eva, Zozo, any, any input from you guys? I mean, we were sent here because they needed help, so I... I don't, I'm not sure, but it seems like maybe just going in and letting them know might be the yeah. best. Yeah. I don't think there's any need to be stealthy here. Okay. Uh, but it echoes in a rush uh, anyway, so she'd think that anyway. <laughs> uh, I then follow behind Echoes. She seems like she's just going to continue to walk in. I don't know why, but I'm going. <laughs> I just need to be there. <laughs> Okay, so you guys just kind of uh, walk into the town? Yep. Okay. Um, after a hard morning traveling through uh, the woodland forest, uh, you, you all kind of arrive as a group uh, to the small village of Honeywell. Um, it's on the edge of a very vast forest, um, and it's uh, re renowned for its honey beer. Uh, it seems to be brewed from water and uh, very sweet, or from water that's very sweet from the well of the cave. Uh, that's at the square. Um, hunters and travelers, uh, all, they all use this small village as a way stop when traveling off the beaten path. Um, you uh, can't, you notice that the town is very small. There's a reason why it's rarely on a map. Um, there's only, you know, half a dozen, you know, uh, houses or so around. Um, but there, there's obviously like a tap house. Um, and uh, you can... That's going to be probably the first building that is closest to you as you enter the town. You don't see any uh, f people around uh, just yet. Um, would it be worth walking around until we see signs of people? Ooh, investigation check. <laughs> sure. Are there people nearby? <laughs> oh, you won't need to run it. There, obviously, there's people that live here. Um, it's just they're probably all inside doing their business. Um, is there an inn in the town yep. um, that's open? Well, yeah, the tap house will, will be right, you know, catty corner. I guess go yep. straight into there then. Okay. Uh, you walk in and uh, there's a man kind of you know, tidying up, dusting around. Uh, he hears you come in. He says, Oi there, friends! What can I do you for? Uh, well, I've had a long journey. Can I Can I have um, your your honey mead? Or honey ale, even? He, big old grin on his face. He's like, but of course! World famous is our beer here. I would be happy to separate you from your coin. He kind of trots over to the, the bar and uh, pours some of this um, uh, this mead for you. And he says, what brings you folks to Honeywell? And he kind of serves up some mead uh, to at least echo because you said it. Does anyone else want some? 
I will. I'll take this. I'll take some. Okay. Um, yeah, he seems very proud of, uh, this honey beer. So, uh, also, you know, small town, they'll take your coin. So you kind of just tosses some mugs to your guys' way. You know, we look like we got money. <laughs> He's like, I mean, I guess we technically do. He says, my name is, uh, Thomas Ta uh, Tankar. I'm, uh, the owner of this establishment. And, uh, proprietor of this very fine honey beer. I hope you enjoy. So, we came to this town because we were requested to come and help your town out. Just what exactly do you guys need help with? He kind of looks at you, confused, like, help our town? He stole the cat. I did. <laughs> are you? Are you? Are you, you? You look like the adventuring type. Are you here to, you know, help out with some farming? Would please explain. Lushu, explain why we're here. <laughs> I'm not your pet. Mm. <laughs> no, but I was not there for the entire conversation. Of why we need to go to Honeywell. Yeah, but you're aware of, like, you know, the... The things that we've heard about it with the stones and the anomalies. May I ask yeah, wait, they it? are aware of that, right? Just not the conversation that we had about Echo knowing about Honeywell. Mm -hmm. No, wait, you would now, because she's been talking about it constantly. Yeah. Right? So... We do have the same information, I think. Can I ask if there's a wizard or any uh, magic people around here? You kind of that we could talk to. Chuckles to himself, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. We are a very simple folk here. Uh, we have many women by ways of travelers, but uh, people that seem to live here live a very simple life. You can't think of just anyone in your town that may seem a little bit out of the ordinary. Just a, just a little bit. Um, he says, uh, no, I've, I'm one of the, the elders here. Everyone, I've pretty much known everyone that has, uh, lived here since, you know, they've been born. We're very simple folk. Then who could have called us if it's not? Well, you didn't get called. It's, um. The, the, the orb. Of, I I should probably come up with the name for it. Yeah. Was was just kind of pinging, saying there there's something happening in this area. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you if you've got any lodging for the at least for tonight. Just yeah, we have a couple spare uh, beds, but uh, sorry, we don't we don't have anything in well uh, in way of a uh, privacy much. We apologies. Um. That's fine. I think I want to stay here and see if if anything may happen. If any, if you may need help any time in the coming days. Uh, as you kind of you say that, uh, an old-looking elf noble uh, kind of enters the tap house, uh, and he oh, yeah. <laughs> he greets Thomas in a. Ah, uh, Thomas, my young man. How goes the business today? And uh, Thomas replies, Very well! I Very similar voice, I apologize. Very, very well, Elder Harris. Uh, just speaking to these fine people from afar, tell them about this amazing honey beer we got here. Uh, they seem to be looking for some sort of a adventurer. And he responds, he's like, A group of adventurers! Or, I, this is an elf. A group of adventurers, you say? Very convenient. Uh, would you find people wouldn't happen to be able to do us fine village and folk a favor, would you? It seems the uh, spirits of our loved ones in the graveyard are restless as of late. Many of the locals are feeling uneasy at night and some even throughout the day. I believe it has something to do with the spire of Rest Mountain to the far north of here. It's about a day's walk through the woods. If you need camping supplies, we'd be happy to help you out. Uh, the locals here know how to take Indeed, care of themselves. 
What's the name uh, of the mountain again? The name of the mountain? A uh, spire yeah. of rest. Uh, you wouldn't happen to have any more information about the going on of the graveyard, would you? Uh, you're asking the elf? Yes. Unfortunately, very little. But it does seem that uh, they are uh, recently dead, have uh, seemed to become vengeful and uh, attack uh, anyone that gets near the area. It's quite sad. Death is supposed to be an eternal rest and our uh, our fallen friends don't seem to be getting that luxury. <clears throat> uh, I, say something I, would very... do, I will do whatever I can to get your loved ones rested again. I will take whatever you offer to get us uh, on our way there. Um, any camping gear, we don't care how 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 bad it may be. I will do this for you because I I don't believe that anyone should be uh, at unrest after their death, and I would do anything to help that situation. I'll be more than happy to go to the mountain to see if there's anything going on. Okay. Um. Still kind of Lucius and not in agreement. I kind of cur curse something really bad and, uh, like, orc. You're gonna say something? I said I, I, I curse under my breath and orc. Okay. Uh, the, the elf kind of, or the elder kind of looks at you and just, and just doesn't really respond. <laughs> <laughs> So, what do you... I turn to the party members. So, since there's two different things going on, do you think we should split up to investigate the two sites? Wait, two sites? Well, you said one is the graveyard and then one's the mountain, right? No, it's the same place. The happenings at the graveyard are happening because of the mountain. There, yeah, it's at the mountain. Yeah. Oh. Well, then, never mind what I just said. Um, are we still have potions and everything, right? Yeah, you guys have. I think actually all of you guys have some potions left. Mm -hmm. You can check. Yeah, I have a few. Um, I have three. I have three as well. Yeah. I also have a handy ring if I die, so you know, <laughs> not all bad. <laughs> okay, so uh, if you would like to provide us with those provisions now, we'd be happy to head to the mountain uh, immediately. He says, but of course! Um, he kind of <clears throat> walks outside and he says, please wait here! And he kind of Leaves for a moment. Uh, he comes back. Um, it's a very simple town. He comes back with some, um, you know, hunting knives, some animal skins, uh, a few arrows. Um, nothing too crazy. Um, but, you know, he kind of says, these are the things that we have to offer, but being the adventurer type, I'm sure you're very well, <laughs> more well off than we, we could provide. I'll take, I'll take everything you to offer. Um, I'm very thankful. Okay. Um, yeah, so there's a couple of animal skins if you guys want them. Um, Pancog, there's, or I guess there's like six arrows, so you guys can split them up if you want. <laughs> I think it's better if Pancog has them just purely because, yeah. you know, yeah. Ranger. Okay. Well, I, I use arrows as well, though. That's a, in one of my main... Uh, um, you, you have a crossbow, though. A crossbow, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, but that would use bolts, you use not arrows. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Can I take the animal skins? 
Sure. Because I can make leather armor that I can make later or at some point. Because I've got, I believe, I've got a kit to let me do that. I'm double check. Yeah, there's a, there's three rabbit skins and a fox skin. Oh, uh... Do you know what? I'm gonna take them, and I'm gonna see if I can use them later, like place them over something which looks like, you know, maybe like a log, put the rabbit skin over to try and use it as bait for something bigger, so they think it's the rabbit. I can, you know, attempt that. That's what I'm gonna try with them later. So yeah, I'll take the, um, the pelts. Um, okay. Let me add that. I'm gonna take a pelt for sleeping. Blanket in it. I was gonna say we don't we have bed rolls, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm animal fur though. Back in the day, that's where it was at. Not so much anymore for obvious reasons. Okay. Um. So you've been given some supplies. Uh, what are you guys doing now? Um, have we got enough rations and food? We ate before we left. I have six one-day rations. I think I've got a, ra a couple of rations, yep. I was gonna say, didn't you give all yours to the rat people? Rat people. Um... We should still have rations. Man, oil. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I think... I think you're right. I think you gave uh, all your rations and helping the rat people. God damn rat people. <laughs> <laughs> damn you and your kind heart. <laughs> God. I still have eight day rations, so I have at least a whole week and a day. Yeah, and you know, I'm sure people could share with you if they yeah. if they want. Fine. I think as long as we've all got what we need to go as a group, then we're ready to go. You guys wanna uh, yep. head towards the mountain then? Let's go. Be coming around the Let's go. Okay. Be coming around the as uh, Thomas mentioned, it'll be about a half day's journey just to uh, get near the mountain. Um, so you guys take the path, uh, Pancog's guidance, you know, going through some dense forest still is, uh, making things a little bit easier. Um, but, uh, night has definitely begun to, or the sun has definitely begun to go down. Um, it's getting a little bit darker to see. Uh, the mountain still seems to be, you know, a good few hours away, uh, of travel, and, uh, it's getting more difficult to make it through the mountain and... You know, you don't want to... Uh, I'm not going to make a decision for you, but... Um, yeah, it's getting dark, and you're in the middle of a dense forest. Should we set up uh, camp? I mean, everyone at the moment, apart from Zozo, has dark vision. Mm -hmm. Um, But... So we're more cave? prone to attack. Right, but I also have lost my advantage... Because we're no longer in a forest. No, you're in a forest. Yeah. But you said we were near the mountain. You're nearing a mountain. I mean, mountains can be in forests. Mm. You're still, like, a couple hours away from the, the area you need to get to the mountain. But you're still in forest. I feel like we'd have a greater chance of success on our mission if we took a rest until it was daylight. Yeah, especially with all the stuff that's going on lately. Did In, you say uh, there was a cave well. nearby? Sorry. You were asking me? Yeah. Did you say something about a cave nearby? There there could be a cave. It, it would probably be more towards the mountain. But. Mm, okay. Um... Yeah, and yeah, I think Lucy would agree. Probably best to set up camp. Start a fire, get the marshmallows out. <laughs> uh, Go ahead. Do we need to roll anything for setting up, uh, starting a fire and whatnot? Nope. No, you you guys know how to start a fire. Uh, but you guys set up a camp. 
<laughs> break, in, break into some rations. Um, you, you find a nice place in the forest. You know, it's it's kind of near. There's nearby stream. Um, there's enough of a area that you guys can, you know, be close enough to each other. Um, but it's you, and to not feel crazy cramped or you know intruding on each other's space. Uh, but you set up a nice little camp here. Uh, you guys can chat amongst yourselves or whatever you need uh, wanting to do um, as the the night draws. To an end. Hmm. Uh, this this is where um, Lushu is gonna use like you know the cover of night as well as this like little stealthy skills. Um, he's gonna um, say to the rest of the party, um, "Give me give me fifteen minutes. I'll I'll be back soon." And he's gonna go into the woods and try to find um, like I said before, try and find like a small log. Um, or a small, like, bunch of leaves, kind of put them together and put, um, the rabbit pelts, like, you know, a group of three around one little area. Um, and I'm going to get close enough to the camp, because, you know, with our, with our massive elf ears, we can hear a little bit further. Um, so I'm going to be, when I sit back down and join the group, I'm going to be listening out very carefully for, like, you know, little pitter patter, like, wolf steps, fox steps or something. Maybe something to hunt to gain some extra rations. Okay. <clears throat> Seeing as we're there for the night. Don't I have a pseudo dragon that you want to take him with you? You'd have to summon him. Ah. I think it'll draw attention. Yeah, <laughs> okay. It'll be a bit, a bit much. Um, He's only tiny. I... He'd be no trouble. <laughs> I think I task Tyrion or Kyrian to uh, kind of uh, skulk about the area and make sure that everything is, is good as far as cat senses and whatnot. Okay. Is that animal handling? Um. Okay, so tell me exactly what you want him to do. So, like, I gesture and tell him, hey, circle around the camp mm -hmm. to make sure that there's no predators. Um, okay, how far away from you do you want him to circle? Uh, I, I look to Echo and I say, uh, what do you think the furthest away from camp we need to send him out? Um, I think a good 10 meters. We don't want him too far away, just in case something comes way closer. But we don't want him too far out. And then if he just keeps going around in a circle around the campsite. Okay. I mean, you're also a ranger. You could actually use your skill to see if, you know, there's been any predators around. Well... I could, I could do that for my, my favorable enemies. Oh, you're in forest. You get advantage on that stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, then let me go ahead and check to see if I sense anything uh, as far as, like, predators or something just wrong in the area. Um, yeah, roll a nature check. Nature. Uh, and advantage. I thought that was going to be a double 20 then. Yep. Wow. Uh, <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, you you can tell, uh, at least within the immediate vicinity, there's no... Um, there's no, like, big animals or something that could actually cause you guys uh, trouble or damage unless, you know, you provoked them. Um, so you're, you're relatively safe. I then look at Lushu and I'm like, do not do anything stupid. Like? Provoking anything that could potentially kill us. He's a range, not a ranger, a who that? He's a rogue. He's a rogue, he'll be fine. 
Uh, so you're gonna make you're you're essentially trying to set a trap to catch bigger game, Lushu, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, sure, you can set one. Um, how far away oh, from I the set, camp? I, 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 yeah, I said um, I'm setting up three, uh, kind of like you know, because rabbits usually they stick together a little bit as they um they forage, um, and rabbits usually come out at night. Um, to do so. So, um, yeah, I'm going to wander off um, about maybe... How far away can I hear? Like, hear efficiently enough to, like, the sound of animals walking around and skulking, etc. Um, if they're not, like, stealthing, I think, like, 60 feet. Okay, then. Well, I, I'll probably put it 60 feet away then, um, considering, you know, I don't want to be too close. It'll probably startle them. Um, considering what we've got a fire going as well. Um, so yeah, about 60 feet away. I'm going to set up three. I'm going to, um, to make it easier, just find like, a pile of leaves, kind of mold them into like, the shape of just long, like, you know, rabbit sort of shape, and drape the skins over and fill it up with sticks to keep the head up. Um, and same with like all three and kind of have them arranged in different positions, like one facing that way, one that way, one that way. Uh, you know, like this little... Oh, I'm trying to try and find an open area. Okay. Uh, sure. Uh, you, you can, uh, set them up. Uh, it'll, it'll take you, you know, 40 minutes or something. Uh, the rest of the group has been hanging out, enjoying the nice little campfire while you're off doing the hunter things, I guess. Um, the, the moon is starting to get pretty high, um, Nothing crazy um, has happened. You guys have kind of just been conversing. Um, are you guys all just going to fall asleep? Or is you guys going to be taking watch? How is this going to work? Uh, what time did you say it was now? It's probably like 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Well, actually, I think every single one of us, apart from Zozo, has the... Um, what is it? Let's have a look. Da, 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 da. Trance? Uh, trance. That's the, yeah, we can... Um, you don't need to sleep, but meditate semi-consciously for four hours a day. Um, which is the equivalent of eight hours of sleep. So that's a... That's a... Like, long rest worth in four hours. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So, I guess because we're all elves, we can kind of... Because we're not actually sleeping, we're in a trance, we can kind of still be aware of our surroundings. I think uh, only full elves can do that. So that's me and Echo, right? I believe so. No, oh, wait, uh, she's... she. Oh, yeah, she's a high elf, so yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so me and Echo can do that. So I'm going to... Um, Lucia's going to ask um, Echo if um, she wouldn't mind um, joining him in a trance. Um, so we can stay aware of what's going on to help the party, um, over... Uh, they still have the trance resting though, right? They just can't hear or be aware, right? I don't think so. No, so they haven't got trance? Mm-mm. Okay, nope. then, so I'll suggest that, um, and so the rest of the party hears it also, that me and Echo, um, take turns... Um, because their rest will be eight hours, Arcus can be four each. If one of us stays in a trance whilst the other one stays awake, then we can take shifts, really, and have a long rest worth in four hours, and the party can be safe in case anything happens. And our Lucia will say he'll take the first watch because he wants to keep an ear out on his trap. Okay. Uh, you said Lucy's gonna take first watch? Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Um, okay. So, you guys are gonna tuck in, settle in for the night? And you, you, got, you guys kind of agree with that yeah. idea? Yes, even though I feel like we're falling into a trap, but yes. I mean, you can convey that to the party if you want. No, that's that's just meta stuff. So okay, no. Um, okay, so Lucio, you're just gonna take a uh, first watch. Um, a few hours go by. Um, everyone's kind of asleep. Uh, Lucio's 
um, meditating and uh, resting up. Um, it's about midnight. Um, the uh, we'll see, is, would this be uh, Echo's turn? You guys gonna switch? I guess. Yeah. Um, I, I'll say she, she. You guys could be tra like just meditating next next to each other. It doesn't matter. You can meditate as long as you want. Right? Yeah. Like while we're in our meditative, like resting state, we're still aware of what's going on and can hear and everything else, right? Correct. Uh, yes, yeah, so yeah. I guess we can both just meditate. Okay. So you're meditating there, um, Echo. Um, you uh start to feel an itchy, prickling feeling, um, over your skin. Okay. Um, that's not good. Um. It's, uh, the, oh, wait, hold on. The forest is kind of, uh, gone eerily silent. Um, and, uh, seems like there's some wind beginning to pick up. Is our fire still going? Um. Or has it died down a lot now? It's died down a bit. Okay. Um, as everyone else begins to, you know, they're drifting to sleep, uh, the wind begins to, to surge. Oh, I wish I had... Sound effects for this. It's fine. Um, the wind begins to surge, um, and it's it begins to build in intensity. Uh, the wildlife all around has stilled, and a uh, strange tingling feeling comes across all those that uh, those of you who can use magic. So uh, Eva, uh, you 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 wake up. Uh, you you start to feel this feeling. Echo, you feel it. Um, yeah, the, the, I guess just you two uh, can feel it. Um, uh, I guess Lushu, uh, Zozo, and Pancog, you, uh, see a visible dimming in the natural world. Um, it's as if night itself has come to, uh, t to claim the camp. Again, like, darkness is closing in around you. Um, the wind is starting to kick up even more now. It's, it's strong enough to completely extinguish, uh, the campfire. Um, the rustling of the trees now makes it difficult to hear one another. Uh, and suddenly there's a crack of uh, luminous green lightning cracks across the sky, uh, followed by another almost instantly um, hitting the, a, tree, a nearby tree, uh, filling a branch to the ground, waking everyone else up uh, that happened to be still asleep. I'm pretty sure you're all awake by now. Um, the wind now becomes a, a whir whirling torment, or a torrent, and as the rain starts to increase its volume... Um, the, the the rain begins to feel like daggers uh, slashing into any exposed skin. Oh, right, there's no sound. That's not normal. <laughs> um... Is it tearing through the tent that we set up? Uh, yeah, the tent is... <laughs> if you oh, haven't... Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, because the wind is like gone. Um... Yeah, there's lightning strikes. Are they are they concentrated on like one part of the forest, or are they just completely random everywhere all around us? Um, it's it's random, um, but the the lightning is green. Since the lightning is green, could we potentially do like an Arcana check to make sure that we don't know what type of uh magic is being used? Uh, if you sus if you suspect it's magic, sure, go ahead and roll. I suspect some sort of magic is in play. So go ahead and roll. We need to get out from under the trees. Remember, probably a really uh, dangerous place to be. you guys probably can't hear each other because it's so loud. Oof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you you might be suspecting that it's magic, uh, Pancong, but you wouldn't have an idea what it is, and uh, you're more worried about the lightning and. Uh, the wind and the danger that is immediately being presented to you guys. Uh, Lux, so when you were doing your rounds, did you see any cover that's not under trees that can get us to safety while we figure out what to do? Can I hear that? Did you know that before? Um, probably not. Uh, roll perception. Okay.
Oh, there you are. Jesus. Right. Perception. Uh, uh you notice that uh Echo is obviously yelling something. You pick up bits and pieces of what she's saying. She heard you hear uh Lushu run around. Okay. <laughs> New option. Um, I rip a page out of my diary and then write that information to him and hand it to him. Um, <laughs> isn't the rain gonna like? I was gonna say the rain is that? probably gonna rip it to shreds. With the wind as well. Yeah, the yeah. You can you can try it, but I might make you roll for it. Okay. Okay. Quite. Fine. Yeah, I'm gonna try it. Um, what am I rolling? Uh, the the wind is kicking up even more now. Um, everyone, uh, let's see. Everyone roll a survival check. Ooh. I'm proficient. Let's go. Same. Is I'm out. <laughs> what is with these rolls? No. Yeah, Pancog. No! Oh, there's a one. Um, okay. So survival for everyone, huh? Uh Oh, we need uh one from I think Zozo. My dice are like loaded right now. <laughs> uh it'll be in your skills, yeah. Perfect. Okay. So you uh Eva is Sorry, I'm sorry. My font is so small. Yeah, um Oh, you're at half. Per oh, times half. You got a bonus because you're a bard. Stinking bards and their crazy skills. Wait, uh, do I do I get an advantage because I'm I'm proficient in force? No, this is a, this is a storm. Um, so Eva's fine. Uh, apparently, you are you found a really great tree, Eva. So you're you're fine. Everyone else takes one d four damage. Uh, from the, the the cutting wind and uh, and oh, ouch! Ten Kong takes four. Yeah, you guys go ahead and just roll a, a D four. And oh, jeez! Oh, you guys are getting the max damages. You all rolled a four except for Zozo. Holy crap! I'm okay. telling you, these dice are loaded. Uh, Absolutely cursed. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you guys are uh, starting to take damage um, from the storm. Um, Lucy, we'll say when you were out uh, doing your hunter things, uh, you did happen to notice that there was some uh, shale and uh, some rock kind of around your way, so uh, there could be uh, caves nearby. Or some sort of cover. Um, people still can't hear me, though, can they? Nope. It's a gest gesture, like follow me. Mm, um. Could could he yell at the top of his lungs and like roll performance to see if we can actually hear him yelling super loud? There you go, wind. Um, sure. Yeah, sure. Go ahead and do that. Roll performance and see if people understand. <laughs> I have a plus zero in performance. This is not going to go well. <laughs> well, well yeah. you know, you could always be like just that doing. Been, there you go. You, you could be doing gestures. It's mostly trying to get people's attention. Um, okay. Whether or not they see you. Um, it, it is up to you. Like everyone's kind of still in the tent. Um, Zozo might have difficulty because there is no light anymore. Um, because, uh, the campfire's out. Um, could, I could I potentially just pick Zozo up and, like, carry her out with me? <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll have to see. Did, are you near Lushu to see that he's gesturing? Yes. Okay, sure. Um, we'll just say that, yeah, you're all kind of in a panic. And you see Lushu, like, doing a gesture to, like, follow me. And I reach down, I grab Zozo. Do I need to do, like, a strength check? Uh, <laughs> I guess it depends, uh, Zozo, whether or not she knows it's you. 
Do you just walk up and just grab her? Or do you like... Because if you do... We, uh, yeah. Um... I, I, re I, I literally go... Uh, I, I run towards where I, when I last saw her. I see her still there. I gr pick her up by like, the back of her clothes and like secure her to my side. Uh, okay, Zozo, how would you respond to suddenly being grabbed by a force that you don't see? Um... You know, she's been real go with the flow with it, and she can't see. And you're just gonna trust that it's a, you're not being... So I think she might actually just kind of, like, it might be like the fight, flight, freeze response, just okay. freeze, like, okay, I can't. Well, mental it. note, if there's giant eagles, Zozo will just accept the fate of being oh eaten. <laughs> okay, um... Uh, at this point, um, just to make sure the Nushu doesn't get hurt or, like, thrown around by this wind, he's gonna take out two of the... I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but I know what they are. The, the, the pittens out of his rucksack. I think, you know, you can put them in rocks for rock climbing. Mm-hmm. Um, I have ten of them. I want to take two out and kind of dig them into the trees as I go by. To sort of give myself something to have, you know, hold on to in case the wind gets a bit too much as I'm going from tree to tree. Okay. Um, so, I should have asked. I, I forgot. Uh, when you guys went to sleep, did you guys take off your armor? I guess you're all in... No. You're all in light um, armor, no, right? I was already up. I was already up doing... Okay. Well, we were meditating, so we wouldn't really have to pick anything up. We were still aware, so yep. I guess... Yeah. So you guys are fine with the armor. Uh, but in terms of your, your supplies and stuff, there are on the ground, like your backpacks and stuff. Um, are you... Uh, I'm okay. assuming you're going to want to take those with you? I'm going to pick everything that I'm going to need up. Okay. So I don't Before you do that, everyone roll initiative. It's a trap. Oh, dirty 20. <clears throat> it's a trap. Oops, wrong one. I friggin knew it. I knew I should have said something. <laughs> Echo, why did you do an intelligence check? Because I'm an idiot. Did the wrong one. <laughs> uh, it's on your main page. Uh, it's the, uh, the main tab. I'm in the main tab. Oh. It's next to your armor class. Yeah, the in it. Thank you so much. There you go. <laughs> oh, nice roll. Um, okay. So this is going to be fun. Um, no. So you guys are going to be going in order, obviously, of the initiative. Um, you probably want to gather your supplies um, as you run. Um, well, I already said that I took the pittons out of my backpack. So uh, we're, we're, we're doing that. We're, we we have to do this before that happened. Oh, okay. Uh, no, yeah, sure. So yeah, I'll pick it up. Yeah. It's all good. Um, so, Lucius gonna be going first. Um, you're gonna you're gonna have to take turns picking up whatever items that you want to take with you. Um, so, I, I think most of you just have uh, a bed roll that is out. Um, if you slept on the ground, I don't know if you elves, meditating, put a bed roll down to sit on. Whatever you did, I'll let you decide. Sit on the ground. Um, yeah, and, um, because we were meditating and aware, um, I'm gonna say Lucy didn't actually unpack anything. He just kind of took the backpack off yep. and set it to the side. The only thing that he has lost now is those rabbit skins because there's no way he's going back for him. Right. Okay. Um, so anything that you want to bring uh, with you that is, you know, on the ground, uh, you're gonna have to. Take some damage uh, to pick it up. Um, Could I so, potentially have Kyrian grab my bag? I mean, he'll he would take damage too, but. <laughs> um. So, anyone, you, you're you're gonna have to pick up your your backpack, your sleeping bag if you used one. Um, your weapons. Fortunately, you guys slept in your armor. 
Um, so every time you got to pick something up, you're going to be taking damage. So, Lushu, your first go. You have your backpack. That's it, because nothing, I didn't take anything else off. Yeah, I guess I your, your dagger's on you, so sure. On my side. So literally my only thing is my backpack. So what do I have to roll? Um... You, you, uh, you roll a d4. D4, okay. <laughs> Jeez, dude. Of course. <laughs> All right, you just took four damage. Yay. <laughs> oh, I should probably do the turn. All right, Echo. It's your turn. All right. Uh, I am the same. I only have my backpack because I was leaning on it. Didn't take anything out, but I'm going to take damage on how I am. Oh, All two. right. Um. Zozo. Zozo. She's gonna go for. We have to pick up our weapons, our backpack, and our bedroll. Mm -hmm. Or those are the options. Yep. Uh, Is Zozo still in the arms of Pangog at this point, though? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Be before this. Yeah, I, I would assume this happens be before. before yeah. I pick Zozo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'll do before. Wait, does that mean that Pancock will take damage for picking up Zozo? No. <laughs> well, maybe. I don't know. We'll find. We'll have to figure that out. Uh, Not if she's close enough to my stuff, I feel like. I feel like it should all just be included. Alright. <laughs> Zozo, what are you grabbing first? Uh, the weapons. Okay. Ooh. Oof. Ouch. Uh, Pancog. Well, would my longbow, my longbow would be attached to my quiver, so. Yeah, I'll say those are attached. So, just a d4 for your weapons. Uh, weapons. Jeez, you guys are rolling, all rolling max damages on a d4. Oh my god, alright, uh, Eva. She's probably gonna have to go for the weapons. She probably doesn't use her bedroll too much. She's like more accustomed to just like laying on the ground or on the grass. Okay. Um. So yeah, to, just to go for the the weapons and pick those back up. Again. Dang. Bruh. Yeah. You guys are. I, I think the dice are broken. They're stuck on fours. I'm telling you, they're broke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there there like three twos <laughs> and an order. Uh. I guess yeah, Lucio's so, turn, but what are you doing? Um, is anyone's stuff close to me? Is there anyone who's got more, like, a lot of stuff on the floor, which they might take a lot of damage for, that I can just quickly... Although, so, so, she must have had some stuff left behind because she got, like, scooped up. <laughs> well, that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Oh, okay, good, good, good. Me scooping her up is after the fact. Oh, no! Um... So, yeah, is there anyone's stuff close enough that, that would, like, if they've got more than, let's say, two more things, or, like, three more things, um, is there anyone close enough where I could pick something up for them and just get out of there quicker? Yes! Uh, uh, yeah, you can help. Uh, okay. Zozo has a bedroll and her supplies. I don't even care about bedroll. Yeah. Uh, uh, pretty much everyone else has their backpack to pick up. Okay, well I'm gonna I'm gonna help Zozo and pick up that uh, bedroll for her. Okay. And one. Hey, there you go. You shall sleep with her tonight, lady. <laughs> Echo, your turn. Okay, I have got everything, but I'm gonna do a kind favor, seeing as everyone else took four and I only took two as well. What does everyone need? It's just Zozo's supplies and. Well, you picked what? What did you pick up last time? You picked up your uh, your weapon. Um, I had all of my stuff in my backpack, so I was. Yeah, we were both meditating, weren't we? Like, yeah. It's where I meditate, so. Right, but you're you're not carrying a, a crossbow when you're meditating, right? Good point. I'm gonna need my crossbow. Thank you, sir. So, <laughs> what did you pick up your first time? Was it your backpack? My backpack. Okay, so you want to pick up your weapons now? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna need them. Two damage. <laughs> Alright, Zozo. You got. Fortunately, 
to the kindness of Lushu. He's got your bedroll. You have your weapons. You want to grab your backpack? Oof. <laughs> you guys are taking way more damage than I even expected. Pancog. Question. Do I need to pick up Kyrian as well? No. Or is he gonna be just fine? He's probably like booking it for any sort of cover anyway like yeah you just dove into it so you can you can pick up your backpack i just pick up my backpack okay oh sorry jeez yes. no no not bad not bad it's still bad, yeah. <laughs> not as bad. <laughs> um okay eva time for the traveling pack let's grab it okay at least it's not max again there you go. Could be worse. Could be worse. All right. Could be worse. Lucius turn. Um, at this point. Um, has Zozo picked up everything now? Weapon. <laughs> Zozo has everything picked up. And no one else. You said before there was no one else nearby who uh, like, I could help. Hancock right? and Eva have their uh, bedroll on the ground. Who's this closer? Don't care about that. Yeah. I, I was going to say, uh, you, you guys can choose to leave your bedroll or not. Uh, but if you do leave it, you have to get rid of it from your inventory. Okay, well, um, considering Pancog just doesn't seem interested in her, her bed whatsoever, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt to help Eva and pick that up just to get out quick. Wait, I'll you're actually going to... Are you going to pick it up or not? Yep, yep. You're picking it up? I, just roll, I rolled damage, yep, two. All right. You champion. Uh, Echo. Okay, has everyone else got everything, or is there anything else that needs to be got? Eva has a bedroll. Bedroll. Is that bedroll life or death, or do you want it? Because I will go get it. <laughs> I'm gonna get it anyway. You're gonna do it? Alright, you guys are very benevolent. <laughs> but you're not gonna give it back. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine now. Okay. I <laughs> I am a princess. I need two of these. <laughs> All right. Well, I will say this as a DM. You guys took way more damage than I was anticipating. And two, you are very benevolent people. <laughs> well played. Um, so all your gear has been collected. Uh, the storm is uh, building to a crescendo. The wind now is howling gale, pushing against each of your bodies, bringing leaves and branches down all around you. Um... The green forks lightning uh, streaking across the sky, occasionally blasting trees near and far. Uh, you must seek shelter from from the raging torrent, and be, and you begin to press forward into the mountain, uh, towards the mountain. Uh, moving is difficult, but as you, as a team, you kind of stick together. Uh, none of you have shields, unfortunately, uh, so you just kind of holding, you know, your arms up against the wind, bracing against it as best you can. Um, I, I suppose, actually, some of you have magic, so you could use, like, magic shields if you want. I you know. thought our druid would have had heals, right? Have what? Heals. I mean, they can heal, yeah. Um, I, mean, I, have, I think I have cure wounds, too. Yeah, I, I think a lot of you guys can heal, but you are in the middle of, you know, this torrent that's happening. Um, oh, so we haven't found the, no, not yet. Like, yes, um, okay. You're, 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 you know, you're trying the best to protect yourselves as well as your, your friends as you're pushing your way through the forest. Um, Pancog picks up a trail, um, believes, um, from Lucio, you guiding where you found, you know, the remnants of some rock. Uh, Pancog is able to, uh, use her, you know, skill in forest to, uh, recognize what kind of rock it is and is, uh, Takes you to a path on to a nearby cave. Um, uh, they make you. Uh, she take, brings you to the base of the mountain. Um, fortunately, as told by the villagers, you see a. There's a, actually a large opening, and you make your uh, your way to towards uh, the maw of the cave. Okay. 
I see, I want to get out of a storm, but I also don't want to walk into a cave that's going to be extremely dangerous. So, is there any way of doing any kind of checks on how safe this place is? Um, so, like an arcana check to see if there's any bad magic in there. Sure, you can rule an arcana check. Okay. Why do I keep doing that? Oh, no problem, Sloth. Do what you need. There we go. Um, so e bad. That's bad. <laughs> Be Hey, remind me, what does uh, primeval uh, awareness do as far as range or ability? Primeval awareness? Let's see. Stop that. What do you mean? You can use your action to expend a spell slot to focus your awareness of the region around you. For one minute. You can sense whether the following types of creature are present within a mile. So you would detect aberrations, celestials, dragons, elementals, phase fiends, or undead within a, a mile. I'm going to go ahead and use a spell slot and cast that on myself. Okay, uh, so use a spell slot. Um, for a minute, you will now be able to detect any of those things around you. Um... You don't know their location or number, but you are able to uh, discern that there's undead around. <laughs> um, I start kind of laughing. Mister. Um, you guys are technically outside. You're still in the storm. Um, they probably can't hear you laughing. Um, Echo, your arcana check didn't reveal anything. Um, that you were looking for. However, you did um, get some sort of indication that there's some uh, some arc uh, interesting arcana near the front uh, of the cave. Okay. Uh, there I, I think I'm gonna go in, but only just just in. in okay. Enough. So you can't go in yet. The there's a because there's a large stone door. Oh, um, 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 but. Um, you use an arcana check. Um, you see... Um, you, you see kind of like carvings into the door. Um, one of them looks like... Uh, on one door, it looks like a, a big creature. And he's pushing. And on the other door, it looks like... Uh, there's a person wielding a staff. And it's pointing at the door. Okay. Um, so, now that... Uh my technical difficulties are done. Um, I, I, from my awareness, I say, hey, we are surrounded by a bunch of undead. They can't hear you yet. Uh oh. Because you guys are still outside. Oh, crap. Um, well, in that case, can I draw my sword? Sure. And have it ready? Sure. What are you doing? I think I could use my protection from good and evil spell to break any spell that's on that door at this moment in time. Just for... It's protected against certain types of creatures, apparitions, celestials, elements, fey, fiends, and undead. No, that's not the same thing. Yeah, it's it. that would go on you. Uh, that would, yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, oh, you used the first level spell slot? Okay. So you guys are just kind of so so right now you guys are at the mouth of this cave with a big stone door in the way and you're all just staring at it. Are you, is anyone else doing anything? Oh, you said there was a guy with the door with a staff like pointing towards it. There, yeah, there, um, there's two pictures. One of them is like a big burly person and he looks like he's pushing a door, and the other. Do you know, it's it's a two-sided door, like kind of splits open like this. Oh, so there's not actually a person there. I no. There a person there. Oh, no. Okay, okay, well, um, considering with the um the you know card checks or uh, um, Lushu isn't actually aware um of the uh, undead presence, is he? Only Pat correct. Dog is. Correct. Okay. Well. 
I'm not gonna meta game. So yeah, I'm just gonna walk in. I'm gonna go straight in. You're gonna go up and to the door. I'm gonna go up to the door. And can I roll anything to see if I know what it is? Like investigation, history, like anything like that. The the the, the depictions that are carved into yeah, the door. On the, on the door, yeah. See if I see if I recognize them from anywhere. Um, sure. Yeah, you can roll like an up. What whatever one that you want to try to get knowledge for, go for it. Like history or, or arcana. Well, I've got plus one in pretty much all of it. So I'm gonna go for history. Just to see if I've like seen it before and have any sort of memories about it. Sure. Just in case. Yeah. Um, it, to you it just looks like a a basic, like chills it all to the stone or stone how to get into a door. Things happen to me when I'm inside, right? Uh, you haven't opened the door yet. You're, you're outside of it. Oh, okay, so we're still outside. Oh, mm -hmm. have to open the door. I thought it was like a little cave entrance and there was a door there. No, it's like, um, yeah, it's a, well, you're, okay. you're, you're in like a little bubble kind of thing, but you're, there's a door oh, that you need to okay. get inside. Okay. Well, um, if I, if I push on the door, hi, Panicky. Um, if I push on the door, um, is there a way to quickly, like, even if I use my ringer jumping, to kind of push it and jump back? Oh, I could, because there's wind, and it's, like, raining and stuff, that wouldn't even work. Uh, sod it, I'm just gonna open the door, or attempt to open the door. Okay. So, uh, you, you notice that the door actually opens pretty freely. It looks like the, uh, door has been re reused, uh, recently. Um, so it just kind of opens, uh, pre pretty freely. Um, you, uh, are, are, you've opened into the cave. And, uh, okay, and yeah, suddenly you can hear cool. things because the wind is behind you. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna, oh yeah, I, I'm in. That's it, okay. I'm inside. What are you, where are the others? <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna walk up to the door and push it and see if I can get in the same way. Or did it stay open? Or did it like close? Yeah, it stayed open. It stayed open? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm in. I'm in then. Um, I guess since I have Zozo with me, I run in, but I still have my sensor drawn. Okay. So I have Zozo in my non -dumping. So you guys are, you just, you walked into the cave? Yeah, okay, so once you walk into the cave, there's kind of like a... There, there, it's like a, it's a, a little bubble area um, that kind of opens up, and then there's a kind of like a mouth into it that goes more into the cave. You kind of are more in this bubble area. It looks kind of like, the, you know, people would use this for like a gathering area. Um, it's about 20 feet in diameter. Uh, it's nothing too big or crazy, but um, that's that's where you are all at now. The, uh, the wind dies down a bit since you are actually in a cave. You can actually converse and stuff now. Uh, I immediately say, hey, guys, I sensed a horde of undead. Uh, you don't know how many. You don't know if there's a horde. You just sense that there's horde. undead. I didn't say, I, did, I just, you know, I'm going to assume it's a large of undead. I mean... It would make sense that there would be undead here, considering all that's going on. And we are quite close to the mountain. We just need to be careful where we step and how. Lucio's going to ask Pancog where she, like, sensed them from. Was it inside this cave? Was it outside? Like, could she tell whereabouts it was coming from? Or just that there was near? It said that I could just generally see what was around me. So I'm assuming that would be outside then, right? Not inside. Um, it's directed on her, where she can determine, um, I think within a mile. She she knows that a within a mile of her, her position, that there's undead. Then that would make perfect sense. So would it would it get stronger or weaker depending on how far away it is? No. No, okay, so it could be in here. It's either, it's an on, it's like an on or off switch. It's like, yes, there's undead. 
or no, there's undead. I guess it, it, it could be next to us, or it could be like a mile. A mile away, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I was gonna okay. say, I would. Can we take a short break? I was just gonna say it's four thirty. Um, do you guys want to call it here, or do you want to take a short break and come back to it and play for a little longer? Um, I don't mind. Well, I'm I've got like, work tomorrow. I was gonna <laughs> say. I was gonna say our UK friends are probably. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting a bit sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine. I'll be up early tomorrow. Yeah, I was going to say. Oh, it's a bit awake lately. Okay, that's actually... <laughs> a good stopping point. Yeah, a good stopping part. You guys are in a cave, have taken some damage from a storm. But we can pick up next week. I hit, if uh, Nat and... Or uh, if Zvasha and Sulphur join, I have to figure out how to get them involved. But that's a me thing. Um... All right. Um, is there anything you guys needed to say? Wanted to bring up? Uh, no, I'm good. no. No. Cool. Yeah, good, good session. Well, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm happy to be playing with you guys again. I hope you guys had fun. I mean, nothing crazy happened, but you took some damage from some no, killer like rain. From rain. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a lot of damage. I couldn't believe that. But uh, I guess we'll uh, hopefully pick up next week. You guys good? Um, I was gonna say, is it, wasn't it like almost half of our, our hit points? I think some of you are at like half. Yeah. Yeah, some of you, you're, you're at least down a third for most of you. That's pretty bad. That's yeah, that's more damage bad. than you've taken during combats, I think. So, apparently your guys' no, your, your weakness is weather. I, I think we took... I think we took a good portion of that our damage in the fire swamp too. Yeah, it's environmental stuff. That's that's your guys' weakness. You can just beat everything else to a pulp, but soon's weather or something kicks in. It's, nope. Can't these berries, these fire berries, man. They do damage. Quick sand. Quick sand. <laughs> yep, that too. Alright, my friends. To kill me. Well, uh, unless there's nothing more, I guess I'll I'll let your lovelies go. I appreciate you be being here and playing with me. No worries, but it was great fun, as always. Cool. Catch you guys next week. Alright, uh, guys, have a great afternoon for you. Have a good week. <laughs> have a good day. Bye. Bye. Oh, bye. Alright, my dear friends on the Twitch side of things. We, uh... I need, first off, I need to figure out... Oh, I can kill the, the sound. Um, I need to figure out why my uh, stream decks stopped working with stuff so i'll figure that out later um let me catch up on chat see if there's anything crazy i missed um hey serial thanks i hope all right i'm glad you guys are having fun <laughs> uh, i'm looking forward to uh next week hopefully uh we'll get the remaining players in although when we have six people involved like that's the perfect player portrait bar thing that we got going on also i I gotta remember to give you guys experience since you, you did play during the session. Um, but we'll pick up next week. Um, ah, I didn't turn off the blizzard sounds yet. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'll have to figure out how uh, to get the other player. The worst part is gonna be if any of the current players can't make it next week, then we gotta figure out why, what happens to them there. So thank you guys so much for playing with me. I hope everyone had fun. Uh, Twitch, I appreciate you guys being here as well. Uh, let's see, it's 4.30. I might eat something. I might uh, do some stuff around the house. Maybe I'll play some uh, Final Fantasy fourteen. You guys are more welcome to, to join in, if you so desire, um, after I get back online. But appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Um, hope you guys had fun. If you guys did, remember to like, subscribe, comment. Help us out a lot. Let's, let me know what you're liking, what you're not liking. But more importantly, remember to spay new to your pets, adopt, don't shop, donate to a rescue if you can afford it, or open up your house up to the possibility of fostering. That is a very rewarding experience and helps those animals and rescues out that are very much in need. Anyway, I'm Vasive. We are quarantine. Jada thinks it's dinner time because I'm doing my outro, so she's all wiggly right here. You got a couple hours, dog face. Anyways, my friend, hopefully we catch you guys uh, soon, and uh, I guess we'll catch you guys next time. See ya. Come on, doggy. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go.
Oh, yeah, the stream deck's broken. Hold on. Dieting is 80% of getting in shape. Shut up, dieting! <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And completely Go away! It's fine. Alright, you know what? It's good. I'm stinking ads and, uh... Yeah. Bye, friends!